Hey, what's up guys? Uh, long time no see. Um, today I wanted to talk about the best way to organize your custom content on the Source Engine. Um, I'm going to be primarily talking about TF2 for this. This is how I, well, this is the guide, uh, the, the game that I wrote the guide for. Um, I have a text guide on uh, tf2maps.net, and this is the wrong thing that I've got here. It's this one. Um, so I wrote out this. I wrote out this text guide um, a couple of weeks ago, um, or I updated it to this new uh, method that I'm using a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it's proven to be kind of difficult to understand uh, for first-time setup. So I figured I would uh, supplement it with a video tutorial. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be a little bit easier to understand now. Um, but to start off from the very beginning, uh, this um, the base of this um, organization method comes from Top Hat Waffle. Uh, I saw his video on it. Um, I think he probably did it over a year ago, um, and he did it primarily for CS:GO. Um, but essentially, what it does is it it's, it organizes your custom content without contamination with default content. So it's a, just a great way to keep things organized. Um, Again, he uses it for CSGO. I use it for all of my Source Engine games now. Um, and I do it a little bit differently. Um, so I suggest that you read this tutorial. It's really helpful. Um, but I'm going to go through it uh, in a video. And he also has a video on it as well, I believe. Uh, you can find it on his YouTube channel, Top Hat Waffle. Um, but so let's get right into it here. I've got my TFD folder open right now. So. Again, we're going to be using Team Fortress 2 for this primarily. So in the Team Fortress 2 folder, you've got the TF folder right here. And then I created a TF Dev folder, TF development folder. Um, in it, I've got assets and uh, some other things. And we're going to get into that. But the first thing you need to know is um, how content, how custom content is usually uh, kind of installed. So in the TF folder, you've got all of your assets folders here. You've got maps, materials. Uh, models is down here too. It's not actually in the Team Fortress folder. Uh, that's just included in the VPK down here for that stuff. Um, but that's this is where all that stuff would be installed. So if I were to create a custom uh, model, I would put it in the Models folder in here, or custom material, I'd put it in the Materials folder in here. But this also has some stock assets, and it makes it a little bit more difficult uh, to parse um, content that you've installed earlier. So say I have some content packs, I've got the Japan content pack, or the swamp theme. I would just dump that all in here, and then if I wanted to look at it later, I would have to scrub through all of these files, all these folders, to find stuff that I'm looking for. And it'd just be really difficult, um, especially without it being separated. So that's the first, me first method that people use, is just recycling the default folders in here. Um, and then, uh, when Steampipe came out, we got this custom folder. Uh, and the custom folder is unique in that you can have a uh, essentially a container folder um, outside of it before you get to your assets folders like materials, sounds, configs, and models, and all that other stuff. Um, and you can have these VPKs in the root directory. So I have a texture improvement pack here, and then I have uh, an improved and aligned Medibeam, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to see. I have that installed in there as well. Um, and my HUD. So... The thing unique about the custom folder you need to remember is that you can have that container folder set up, and it allows things to be a little bit more organized. But once you start getting a lot of content and content packs, you're going to have all of these root folders inside of the custom folder, and that can be even difficult to parse through. So I wanted something a little bit better, a little bit easier to work with, um, and I thought I found it with um, Top Hat Waffles Guide. Um, but even that was not quite organized enough. So I'm going to pick up now with Top Hat Waffles Guide. And he starts by opening up the game info file, and this is where all of the search paths for the game are um, defined. And um, so what he does is he'll come down here to the, um, the part where it pulls assets from. So the TF directory is where the assets are pulled from. And then he starts by appending a line here for the development folder that you create. So I've got the TFD folder here and I have the game info file in here. So I'll copy the game info file from the root folder of the game and then put it in his development folder and then he'll append the development folder underneath the uh, root folder here and then once he's um, written these down he'll have hammer reference this game info file to pull the assets from. So if I were to open up Hammer right now, I'll open up the TF2 Hammer. And I'll come over here to Tools, Options, once it's finished loading. 
can take some time. Tools, options. Come down here to game configurations. Uh, the game directory is the thing you're going to modify when you use this method. Um, so normally it would just be the TF folder here, which would uh, pull that game info file from the root directory. But we're going to use the TFD folder, which we have that special game info file uh, set up for. Um, and then it'll pull the assets from there. So now if I go back into my game info file, I'll explain kind of how this works. So where um, top half hat waffles method um, stops is before this asterisk here. He's got his TFD folder, or in the case of what he does, the CSGO D folder, and then he just pools all of his assets in there. So he just keeps it, essentially what he does is he keeps it separate from the custom folder even. So in the custom folder, you might have a custom HUD. In CSGO, you wouldn't. Um, but in TF2, you might have a custom HUD. You might have custom voice lines, skins, all that crap. So it'd be difficult to parse out your custom assets that you have for mapping from your skins that you have in game or your custom sounds, like I was saying before. But this approach just makes it so you can have all of your assets included in container folders that you can set up however you want. Um, and essentially, what I do here is I use an asterisk. And uh, the asterisk is used to essentially identify the folder preceding it as the custom folder. So then everything inside this asterisk area, inside the TFD folder, um, is going to be treated like a, c a container folder for assets inside of that, like materials, models, and all that stuff. So I have the TFD folder, I'm going to go ahead and open this back, back up. So I have the TFD folder listed as essentially a custom folder. And then inside that I have these VPKs for ABS's um, ultimate resource pack. And then I have some batch files which won't be referenced, they're just things that I have in here just because I want to keep them organized. And I have a cube map script to remind me of how to build cube maps. And that's all I would have in the TFD folder. And then you see here I've got content packs, custom materials, models, particles, sounds, maps, assets, and maps div. And then I've defined those as custom folders by themselves. So then when I come in my context, content packs folder, I have bullet crops pack, the front line pack, uh, the Japan content pack, jungle assets from uh, Heyo's Borneo map. Um, I've got all that in here, and these function as container folders. So when I go in here, I'm going to have materials and models. Go in here, materials models, and read me from the download. Uh, Japan materials models. This one also has uh, a custom particles manif or a particles folder a file, um, and uh, some particles. So I've got all those in there for the content packs, and then I've got a separate folder for materials that I install. And again, these are con uh, container files, so I can name them whatever I want. And then I've got materials inside of here, and also some source files. Materials. All these custom materials will just have materials fi uh, files. So I can drop all that in here. I've got models. And again, container folders for that. Particles, container folder. Uh, maps, assets which I use uh, to extract assets if I want to be able to see um, if I have a decompiled version of a map and I want to see how um, something was made I'll extract the assets just so I can view the the file in hammer without having a bunch of error messages so I've done that for CP title he had some custom uh, some custom materials in here so I have a folder that I have for that and then the maps D folder is especially cool because uh, now you can have all of your map files all the maps that you're working on the VMFs and all that stuff in here in a container folder so I've got arena gold tooth a map I worked on with a friend um, and some other things that I've just been playing around with um, so say I open gold tooth I've got in here my BSP my VMF and stuff like that and uh, if I had other versions like if I had RC6 or something like that I could make container folders in, inside here for uh, the versions if I wanted to um, but since it follows the same pattern of having this be essentially the custom folder, then I have a container folder in here for Arena Goldtooth, and then the assets. So all this stuff is not going to be read, this is just what happens when you compile. But then the materials, uh, which I have many photos and uh, the thumb thumbnail folder, uh, photos, and also soundscapes, all that will be read. So when I go to compile, CompilePal will pack it properly. And then I also have source folders here for, my, uh, for when I made the uh, many photos. So that's really cool to have too. Um, you can put all of your specific uh, assets for a particular map 
inside this container folder for your map, and it will be read by Compile Pal and the game and be picked up. So then you can pack it uh, without having to have it in separate directories and stuff. So you can keep it all together with your map, which I think is pretty neat. I also want to touch on um, CSGO because CSGO is a little bit different from other games. Um, Team Fortress and uh, Counter Strike Source, Half Life 2, they all have a custom folder. Um, that you can use to drop assets into. Like I said, you have these container folders. Um, but CSGO is different in that it doesn't have a, a custom folder. It has that disabled. Um, so you can't have custom content. And they do that, I guess, because CSGO is a competitive game. Um, so they don't want people using custom sounds, custom, custom weapon sounds, or skins or anything like that that might give them a slight advantage uh, depending on what they're using. So they have that disabled. So you can't use this custom, uh, this custom folder method Instead, you have to do something a little bit different with your game info file, and that is you don't use the asterisks, and you have to input each individual folder by hand. So it's a little bit more tedious, but everything functions the same. So if you recognize I have my app, my maps assets folder, my maps D folder from before, and I've got that container folder like before, followed by my, my assets folders, materials, and models, but instead of just having one maps assets folder inside my game info file followed by an asterisk I have to input each individual folder inside here because there is no custom folder so it can't actually function like the custom folder so I've just got to put each each individual folder in here and specify that each time I, I create a new one so like I said it's a little bit more tedious but it'll still still work out in the same way so that's pretty much it that's all there is to it it's uh it should be a good method for you guys uh to use for organizing your custom content um it'll keep everything separate from your skins your custom weapons all that stuff it'll keep it separate from the base files um it can be used as a essentially a pack checker so when you compile your map and you pack your custom assets into it um you won't be able to see it because it's not referenced by the game itself um, unless the pack has functioned properly um, and it's fairly simple to set up. You just have to remember that uh, in the game info file, the asterisk modifier is going to set the preceding folder to act like the custom folder. So then all the files inside that that uh, asterisk directory are going to have um, are going to be treated as container folders for the assets. Um, so that's all you have to remember if you want to create different, you know, container folders. Um, you can do that. You just need to set it up with the asterisk uh, modifier here. Um, and it works the same for every Source Engine game except for CSGO, and we talked about how to set things up for that. So I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope you guys found it a little bit helpful, and maybe uh, it cleared some things up with my uh, written guide. So we'll see you in the next video.